Obviously, graphics are getting better and better, and as we go into 2024, a pretty high standard has been set. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, let's talk about the best graphics of 2023. Starting off with number 10, it's Horizon Burning Shores. Now, Horizon 2 Forbidden West already looked very, very good. It was made for both the PlayStation 4 and 5, but still, man, is it a good looking game. That being said, the Burning Shores DLC, which was exclusive to the PS5, looks even better. The highlight, of course, is the Burning Shores themselves. They're vibrant, they're detailed, I mean, look at this. This is by far the most fantastical environment we have seen in these games, and wow is it a cool place. When you think about what's possible on PS4 hardware, it's really well beyond that. The giant cliffs, the ruined skyscrapers, the volcano, the sky, it all looks incredible and it's on a scale that just wouldn't be possible if the DLC came to both PS4 and 5. I mean, it, everything else sticks to the regular high quality we expect from Guerrilla Games. Facial animations, character models, all incredible. But it's also what we've come to expect with them. It's really the scale that feels like something new. They really went above and beyond that, and Burning Shores does a lot in terms of expanding what you think a Guerrilla game can be. And number 9 is Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, DLC that basically feels like a sequel. The new area, Dogtown, is intricately detailed and dense. The first time you enter the bazaar, it's just like, wow! So this is what Cyberpunk can look like. And, and that's not to say that they were a slouch in the main game. Once all of the crap got ironed out, everybody kind of looked at Cyberpunk as a very high quality, incredible looking game. And this is above and beyond that. It really shows off the amount of detail possible in an open world action game. Like every mission looks fantastic and is filled with these bespoke elements that don't get repeated. I mean, it's really, really impressive. Before we go, Apologies for the precautions. I only ever rest so much. Sometimes it's just safer to shove the barrel of a Malorian between a Chun's ribs, even if he is on your side. The new characters, of course, look incredible, especially Idris Elba as Solomon Reed. Uh, it's probably one of the best celebrity performances ever in a video game. Uh, just amazing uh, in terms of like the subtle things that Idris Elba does as an actor. That isn't to dump on Keanu Reeves, who also, you know, I mean, he's Keanu Reeves. I'm not 100% sure I would put him on the same caliber of actor as Idris Elba, but he does have a charisma that few people have. Also, his performance in Phantom Liberty is pretty damn good anyways. And Phantom Liberty is always throwing you in these really unique and interesting situations and encounters. It's a roller coaster ride of visually stunning environments and characters. I mean, we've talked about Phantom Liberty a lot in tons of detail, but it really does make Cyberpunk 2077 feel like a new game, and it sets a, a very high standard for open world action games. At number 8 is Final Fantasy 16. So this is a game with very good graphics, generally way above average. But if we want to highlight one thing about them, it's the icon battles. These things are totally insane. They've got these crazy seamless transitions between cutscenes and combat. The monster designs are cool as hell. It just takes spectacle uh, in video games to the next level. And the game, it normally looks really good in cutscenes. It's just a lot more subtle. It's not always flashy like the icon battles. Um, unfortunately, the later half of the game likes to bathe areas, like full areas in this kind of sickly purple light that's not super appealing. There's honestly parts of this game that are kind of ugly, to be frank, but when it looks good, it looks really, really good. Again, cutscenes uh, are really nice. They have these fantastic character models, very cool fantasy designs, 
tons of subtle little world building details in the background um just top-notch environments there's so many locations in the game that are crazy detailed and we only see it for a few seconds in like a cutscene. it's kind of crazy the amount of effort that went into stuff that i mean we see in passing but again the real star of the show are the icon battles where your main dude turns into a giant monster and goes absolutely nuts the amount of effort that got put into each one of these battles is gargantuan and it shows in every single frame and number seven is Dead Island 2, which is a shockingly good looking game with some of the most photorealistic environments I have seen in a while. We've seen a lot of games lean into fantasy recently, um, and that's definitely not a complaint. Uh, it's, it's fun. The best fantasy says something about the real world, and well, it's happened lately. But uh, it is also nice to have something come along and make more mundane places pop. And Dead Island 2 uh, pulls that off in spades. Areas are small, but meticulously detailed. Everything looks very carefully made and rendered to look as real as possible. The character models look good, but I mean, they're obviously fake. They're character models. You can only go so far currently. I don't know if we'll ever get past that whole uncanny valley thing. We do some pretty impressive stuff, um, but I've never seen a sustained performance throughout an entire game where it just looked like a human being. That's fine, though. It's the levels where this game really shows off. Um, that and the stomach churning violence, I will say. Uh, stuff's kind of hard to show because it's gross, but the zombie chopping action is crazy satisfying because of how detailed the procedural damage is. Like, it's technical marvel, and uh, there are YouTube guidelines against showing it, unfortunately. Yeah, YouTube's got us more scared than the dead in Dead Island 2, and it's not like they're not scary. And number six is Portal Prelude RTX. Hey, you like Portal, right? I know I do. Portal and Portal 2 are perhaps some of my favorite games in existence. And the thing about Portal is it, it has very simple, very minimalistic graphics, a style that doesn't attempt to push beyond the clinical i mean obviously once you get through portal 2 you get into the you know more messed up test chambers but portal the original and particularly portal prelude rtx are generally that clinical test chamber thing and it really looks cool when you throw in the ray tracing you got rtx and dlss3 and that really makes a big difference with portal i mean those aren't the only changes you get the ray trace reflections you get lighting shadows tons of amazing stuff like if you're annoyed with games where it's kind of hard to tell the difference uh between ray tracing being on or being off it's like night and day in this such a massive step up visually and number five is a jusson. I'm not French though, so uh, I'm always tempted to call it Jassant. This is a very different game. Um, it's got a very novel control scheme that definitely takes things above and beyond, but also it really reminds me of if you decided to take all of the climbing in like Tomb Raider or Uncharted and just went all out, making it into the mechanic of the game. Like I said, the controls are a little more complicated, but it's a very cool game. It comes to us from Don't Nod, uh, the Life is Strange studio. It, it, it's a weird choice, but they're a studio that makes lots of weird choices. They seem to not want to be known for one type of game. It's one of those games where the design is just so damn good, and the character animation is as well. I like They don't really push polygons too hard, um, but they know what they're doing to make something that is visually stunning to see. Every area is packed with all these little details and senses of wonder. It's one of those games where you just want to find a nice spot and enjoy the view. And number four is the Dead Space remake, which requires no pronunciation consideration. You're out in space and there is living dead messing with you, really making things tough for you. Aw, oh, dang these dead. Why did I ever come up to space in the first place? Now, this is one of those absolute classics, and the remake has done nothing but regard it with reverence. Uh, I think a large part of that is returning to the original Dead Space, aside from any compatibility issues you might have, it holds up. 
So they knew what they really had to do was not necessarily work on the game design, because the game design is very modern and pretty much immaculate. Uh, they had to take the things where stuff just didn't quite work and make it work. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. That damn asteroid shooting part. That was the worst part in the game, and now it's, I mean, a lot better. But let's be real. I, I, this beautifully grotesque remake just has all these incredibly detailed environments. Everything looks stunning, but at the same time, it looks like Dead Space. All the ray tracing really ups the game. Uh, you get the ambient occlusion, you get the fog effects, it all looks so good. Uh, and the faces, definitely a big step up from the original, uh, but the levels are what we're here for. The necromorphs, also more disgusting than ever. There's new ways to mess them up because they really did go in on making the dismemberment system better. And just a good looking game all around, really fun too. And number three is Metroid Prime Remastered. Yes, a Switch game, but it deserves special mention because it is a remarkable remaster. There were so many parts in this game where I was like, this is a Switch game? Because it just looked incredible. And what's weird is the performance is just rock solid at 60 frames per second on a system where more and more games have got major trouble with the frame rate. And the thing is, is this is a stylized game, so perfect realism was never necessarily the goal. And the GameCube original still looks good. I don't necessarily think it looks great. It's a GameCube game. It can only go so far, but Metroid Prime Remastered was rebuilt from the ground up to be more immersive and detailed, and it's crazy. It just, the stuff that I think it really goes above and beyond is stuff like um, how rain hits your visor from different directions. It's beautiful work, especially for a Switch game. And number two is Alan Wake 2. Um, you can't do anything but call this a groundbreaking game. From the moody environments, the incredible facial animations, all the wild artistic flourishes, um, the ways that this game combines live action with gameplay and doesn't come off immersion breaking, it's weird. And it embraces how weird something can be specifically. The whole musical number is absolutely insane. Definitely not the showcase for the graphics in the game, but totally insane. All the character models and animations just look great, but a special mention has to go to Ati for his unbelievably realistic model, which is a huge step up from what we saw in Control. And Control, if I'm completely honest, is great. But still, the first time I saw him talk in this game, I was blown away. The best foreboding woods in gaming history are in, in, in Alan Wake 2. And finally is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, uh, which just has incredible visuals top to bottom. Obviously, a game being rendered in real time can't match up with what a movie is doing, but it's pretty close. The world of Pandora is amazing, and, you know, I'll even say I'm not a fan of Avatar, and... I was impressed with this game, both uh, from a visual standpoint and even just from the fact that it's basically a good Far Cry game. Uh, the detail of Pandora really just cannot be beat, though. It's an alien environment that manages to feel incredibly real, which is, I mean, odd. It's one of those games that makes you want to stop and look around all the time. I do have a couple of bonuses for you. The Talos Principle 2, uh, a real Unreal 5 showcase. It's like Mist if Mist was rendered in real time and also looked a lot better actually because Mist didn't actually look that great if you look back on it. I mean, relative to everything when it came out, it did. You get what I'm saying. Uh, shockingly good looking for a $30 AA game. Really a surprise 
Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Um, weirdly enough, uh, Insomniac managed to make an already amazing looking game look better. It's like a Pixar movie come to life uh, between animation, the character models, the effects and environments. It looked incredible on PS5, but with a beast of a PC, it can actually even look better, which is kind of shocking. And finally, the finals, my new favorite time waster. Combine Mirror's Edge, pretty but dystopian but pretty, realistic environments with like red faction guerrilla level destruction actually taking it a step past there maybe even this multiplayer fps is just a remarkable achievement that still manages to run buttery smooth even when it gets incredibly chaotic and you can barely tell what's going on it's clean and professional in every way just an incredible looking game all around and that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.